Hello, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here, and it is time for my monthly roundups for May. Um, so let's take a look. My main daily tarot journal, so the one where I do my morning pulls, and of course I keep my tracker in here as well. Where are we? May. Should we get the right month? Um, missed quite a bit in May. Um, had COVID, and then had a relapse of something nasty that felt like COVID. Uh, so gave myself time to rest, heal and recoup. Um, it was just a bit crap because I was really, really ill on my birthday. But anyway, <laughs> I have another weekend to look forward to. So it's the month uh, starting May. We start with the season of Taurus and then we move into my month, Gemini, the first deacon of Gemini, in fact. And we have um, Dragon of Sephira and we had the herb mint. So yes, I had lots and lots of herb mint tea. I have mint in my um, cleaning sprays I use from that I make for home. So plenty of mint in my house. Always, actually, just always. And I also made... Um, one of the incense from here, which I believe had mint in it as well. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry if you heard my stomach fell. Uh, we had rose quartz for healing. Very apt, actually. I didn't pay attention to that. Had I have, I probably would have stuck that under my pillow upstairs um, to help me get better. So when I felt like it, two cards. Uh, kind of missed Beltane because I fell ill before, I fell ill the Friday before, so last Friday of April, moving into May. So I kind of missed the Beltane celebrations. Um, it kind of came and went, because I was hoping to have a go at making this cake. Um, so I didn't get there. Well, I might make it for the solstice, you never know. Um, I'll just see, see how things go for me, because life is hectic. Uh, there we go, the May flower moon, this is it. So I made the flower moon incense which has uh, mugwort, sandalwood, rose petals, mint, sage, and thyme. But I didn't get any thyme. My thyme had died from the garden. Um, and I don't keep it in dried herb format in the house. Um, so I did, didn't have the time to put in, but I used everything else and popped it in one of my burners. And it was very nice. And then we just got my, um, as you see, going through my daily pulse. We had the black new moon so um why is it called a black new moon very good question and it explains to us what that is so we have the blue moons where we hear about once in a blue moon these black moons are even rarer because they only happen every 33 months i didn't know that so um may's new moon was the third new moon of the season of spring it's the third new moon in the season of Four new moons. And amongst the definitions, May's new moon, it is the third new moon in a season of four new moons. Now that doesn't make sense to me. Season of four new moons? Oh, because we've got another one to come in June because we aren't quite out of spring yet. Of course, that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Although, why would that one not be the black moon and this one be the blue moon? The, uh, okay. Thinking about it too much. So how they are defined, dividing a year into four seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. Each season has three months, three new moons. When a new moon has four new moons, the third new moon is called a black moon. That doesn't make sense. Okay, let's not worry about that too much. It's been, it's gone and we had it. Um, and it was all about new beginnings. And we have, I love this. Do not meddle in the affairs of dragons for you are crunchy and taste good with ketchup. Yum, yum, yum. Um, so a couple cards got pulled. And then we had some interesting dragon facts. And of course we had um, the budget pages, birthday wish list, and then we are into June. So yeah, not a great deal to see there this time but uh, plenty to keep you occupied. And then my tarot journal. So I actually put a lot in here this month. Starting in May. Not as much as I wanted to get in, to be fair, because I was so ill. Um, 
considering how ill I've been, the amount I've got in here has surprised me. But most of it's just writing, to be very honest with you. It's a lot of writing. Um, but there were spreads and things I really wanted to do and I just didn't. And I've given myself permission to not forget about it, you know. So May 2023. So my card was um, Celebration, Pleasure and Harmony, the Four of Fire. Celebrate all that others bring into your life. Relish the pleasures of good company. And then my oracle was um, to the Gentle Gardener. And this was my last of my calendar spread, pulling the 12 months ahead. Because my birthday is the 27th of May, um, I pull for June. So I pull after my birthday, not before my birthday. And so it wouldn't make sense to pull for May at the 27th of the month, predict. So I pull for June. So my calendar spread starts with June and then it goes around to May, maybe my 12th month in my spread. So I finish up here. So this is the last one of that spread. And the cards I chose to pull were the Bonefire, the Arcane Warrior, the uh, Beltane Oracle, Queen Alice Tarot and Tarot of the Divine. Okay, funny story. Well, not so funny to you, but funny to me. When I was pulling my decks for this, because obviously I put that back on my shelf because I'd finished with it after I used it, I could not, could not remember what the Tarot of the Divine is because some of my shelves are two or three decks deep. And it was one of the back decks. I was staring in my cupboard and I couldn't, I just totally blanked. I actually had to Google Tarot of the Divine to see what it looked like to remind me what deck it was. Unbelievable. That's when you know you've got too many decks or not enough room on your shelves or too many on your shelves, whichever way around you want to do it. That's when you know, when you can't remember what deck that is or a deck on your list and you need to Google the images to jog your memory to get the deck out. But you can see I carried on with the doodles as I did from the month before. And for those who were wondering, the month before I did put, I didn't put the um, card down for that one. Uh, there was one other. I said I was going to come back to and put the card into. Oh, that one. Ah, that one. Um, so I put the spread into that spread that I did at the end of um, April. So you can go back and see that one. And there we go. So week ahead. Uh, first week. So this was drawn up ahead of time when I was in my doodling um, mojo phases. And obviously I didn't do it because I was sick. Crossed it out and popped the new date in for the next week ahead. And then um, got my cards and decided to write a little bit in gold writing to uh, sparkle it up a bit. Um, yellow flower. And this is actual forget-me-nots from the garden that uh, I have sellotaped in to the journal and outlined in gold. So these are actual forget-me-nots from the garden in my journal. The Deacon Walk, so these pages are really plain. Um, so it's me just collecting the correspondences, as I've said uh, in a couple of videos now. So I collect correspondences, just see if I'm adding to my keywords or not. Um, I put keywords down that I pick from or that I pull out from what I'm doing. And um, anything else that I pick up or add as I go along, I'll just pop into these pages. And then these get photographed and added to my um, digital journal that I got from Amethyst Ascensions. So she sells her digital journals online really, really cheaply for about 10 bucks. And uh, 10 bucks, is that the same as $10? Uh, $10? 10, 10 pounds? Is that all about the same thing? Um, yeah, and I have found that it works well on my Samsung. It works really well on um, iPads, but I have a Samsung, so it works on my Samsung tablet. And I can just take pictures and pop them in and use it as a collage um, journal for the Deacon Walk. So I can keep adding to it if I need to. We have, um, this one is from April at Tarot and Witchery. And she did the Get Rooted in the month ahead, which I did give a quick glimpse of this um, back in April, end of April, because I'd drawn it into May, ready to go. And I did my spread and I took a picture and popped it in here. And I used three decks to do this. So I used the Queen Alice Tarot to do the top of the spread. I used the Seasons of the Witch to do the um, trunk. And for my roots, I used the uh, Tower of the Divine. That's why I needed the Tower of the Divine. So um, that was my deck. And it was, let me just read it. So feeding the energy, book. so it's how these feed into like this, the helper card, and then the outcomes are up here, the overarching kind of energy and how these feed into it. Then we have the secret garden spread. I did a whole video on this one um, as a VR to Lennon, Smith and Madwitch. So I shall 
link that below in the description if you want to see it. Um, and it just goes through this, me laying out the cards, talking about my layout. Then we have the Blossom Moon in Scorpio. I use the Queen Alice deck for this. And this one is from Emerald Lotus Flower. And um, I just put a little quote there from Lewis Carroll because I was feeling it. We have the Trickster spread. I haven't put a picture of the spread here. I thought I had a picture to put in, but I haven't. Um, and this one was Aries Witchcraft on YouTube. And she had a uh, pre-recorded video with her and Amethyst Ascension, I think, um, on Aries Witchcraft's channel, where they did this Trickster spread and um, you've kind of like followed along with them. So I did, and here it is. Um, so those are my cards up here. I did use the Queen Alice spread for this because um, why not? And there's my references, my little doodle there in the corner. The Hawthorne tree spread from um, Richie at Longman Tarot. And again, that's on YouTube. So you can follow his community pages for his spreads. This one was 13th of May to 9th of June. So we're still in the Hawthorne tree energy. And um, he does so... This one is the shape of the, the Ogham rune. <coughs> four questions for this one, because I'm so four positions. Then he's written to, um, so this one's a spread for positive change. He's written to Blessed Cardia, um, who sees the issue from both sides. Give me the strength to overcome, to overcome challenges. Let me appreciate the strength that grows within everything I do. I, I overcome, refresh my excitement in exploring new territories. Help me and the possibilities of the bleakest of situations let me see the potential in every shadow and so it is and then I pull my cards and I've written them in here this is as I've said many times this is the uh, wildwood tarot that I use for this spread I don't show it every month and then my summation of what was going on here is as the hawthorn grows it offers shelter and protection to all who dwell within her branches as long as you remain true and honest she will support you through your troubles you need to Often take the first steps and reclaim your own power by facing your fears. Knowing them and the triggers will give you control over them. Call on the Hawthorne to help you protect yourself from these irrational thoughts and fears causing angst and anxiety. May is a great month. And then my week ahead spread. Um, nice and plain. No colour on this one. I wanted to just keep it blank. And then I have put here a little note. This is week three of my month ahead reading. Being expected to take the lead, letting go of own expectation. Do not allow yourself to be provoked. Remain calm. That goes back to the um, spread from April in my uh, tree. That one. So we're week three. So we were those cards there. So we have uh, the Seven of Swords feeding into the Sacred Water, feeding into the King of Wands. And I didn't do a wrap up. Then I did a VR to Total Tarot, what tarot is to me. Um, the idea was to keep it short and sweet, but I was feeling extra, extra creative and extra, extra. So I did a seven, eight minute video on what tarot is to me. And I will link that down below if I get a chance or if I remember. If you haven't seen it, um, it's just a summation. So I've written out basically what I said in here. So I've got a reminder of what it is to me in here. So I've got a permanent kind of paper copy as well. And um, just decorated my pages for that. Then we have my week ahead for the, well, my last week ahead actually <laughs> for May. So 22nd to 26th of May. It's um, this half page is a bit somber in its colors and muted. And then we've got a bit more color over here and my reflections. Um, so the energy, what I wanted to avoid, what I needed to focus on. This will be last week, I think. I've lost track of the days, genuinely lost track of the days. Um, my Oracle card was growth and expansion and then my reflections, overall energy, what I need to know or take with me into the following week. I had two of swords and I put on here, I peacefully make my decisions. The last first, sorry, the first deacon of Gemini is here. So um, May 21st to May 30th. And then I've got my bits of information there. And then I have my solar return spread, which I also did um, this week. So I will link that down below as well. For those who haven't seen how I do my solar return spread, I'll lay it out. And as I did say in that, you'd have to stay tuned to see what I got for all the cards. Now, I made 
a plethora of mistakes putting this into the book. Normally I put it on a piece of A4 paper and stick it in after I've rewritten it a couple of times and made it neat. This time I thought I'd just put it straight into the book. That's fine, but I didn't spread it out enough because I was doodling before I did the writing and I didn't leave enough space, as you can see, between the words. So what I should have done is I should have had my overall energy for the spread here and I should have only had one month on the, on, on the page and then I should give myself you know a nice bit of space to write on. That's the first problem. The second problem is my solar return spread starts for the month of June and I started writing out January. And it wasn't until I'd got to May that I realised I had done it the wrong way around. And it was too late to go back because I don't do in pencil, I go straight in pen. So I had basically started drawing all of my headings and my doodles, doodles went in first and then my headings went in. Um, I got here and realised what I'd done. I was like, do I cover it up or do I just keep going? And I was like, just keep going, it's too late. So I did, so it goes from January through to December and there's a space there to put my spread. Um, but that's why I've actually had to write here, January 2024, February 2024, um, to remind me which way around it goes. And I used the good tarot, the enchanted maps, and then I did add in the extra, the earthly souls and spirits oracle, which I didn't show in the video. I showed I was going to add it, but I didn't add it at that point. Um, and as I said, this took a while, quite a few hours to write up, go through the books and then pull out and surmise and bring it down to what I wanted to say for each card. But we go into June here. So this will be starting now, this month. So this month I have the Queen of Fire, Nine of Stormfields and the Mystical card. And um, a kind of keyword for the month, which is something I've added. I don't normally do keywords, but I popped keywords in, which is what the words are in um, squares showing you that. And then there we are. And then I've like kind of rounded up what my overall energy is for the year here through these three cards. I've rounded up here into um, a kind of remembrance and I'll pop my picture there. So those are, there it is. That is May in my um, tarot journal. So let's take a look at the decks. Okay, so my daily pulls were the beautiful bonfire tarot, bonfire tarot from Gabby Angus West. This is the mass market edition. Um, laminated. I use the fanning powder to be able to get it to glide and shuffle and not stick. So it's been on there for a couple of years. I haven't had to recoat it. So I'm quite pleased with that. And this is, um, I don't think it needs any introduction to introduce itself. So this was my daily pull. So one card a day, full of plenty of symbolism, energy, brightness perfect for the summery um, season the fiery season of Beltane coming to the first and beginning of May and um, you know bringing us through into the um, last part of spring where everything's starting to blossom and the you know sun comes out so absolutely perfect and I don't know if you can see that but it kind of like matches the colors of clothing that I'm wearing at the moment as well nice and vibrant um, so yeah so this is my daily card pull I've had this for years it was my favourite secret deck. I didn't really want to tell people about this deck because I didn't want everyone to have it. Um, I liked having it for myself, which is stupid, I know. Um, but yeah, this is like my, my secret because look at this ten of coins. Isn't that just beautiful? Um, this, I prefer this to the Tarot Avatara by far. Um, I prefer this artwork and depictions. But that's not to say I don't enjoy the Tower of Tara, but this is the one. And this is the one that the word of Sarah Howard, the oracle that I recently got, goes with. So I'm just looking at Four of Swords. Yes, bubble bath, candles, chill. So yeah, there's so many things. It's the Justice card in this one. Justice. No, not Justice. Judgment. One of my favourite judgment cards. But yeah, so that is the Bonefire by Gabby Angus West. And as I said, this was my daily pulls. Just so much in there that you can use and take off of. Um, and the ones, in case you hadn't kind of noticed while I'm, you know, just, you know, lusting over my cards, are the pine cones on fire. And the King of Coins.
Jolly Green Giant. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, it relates to an advert for a food brand for the freezer, for anyone that's not familiar with the Green Giant. I think it's sweet corn. Not my favourite food, frozen sweet corn, but good in a stew. So that was that one. That's my dailies. And then my um, weekly um, card pulls. It's this one from um, Levi at Masculine Intuitions. I can't work out how to put it down. So um, I've done a walkthrough and things of this when I first got it a couple of a while ago, months, months or more ago. Um, we have lovely matte gold edging. So he did do a really good job of um, producing this deck. It's uh, He calls it rose petal finish. Some people aren't sure what to call it. And I've heard people describe it as sort of rose petal-esque. Um, it is rose petal, but it's just, it's the good one. It's the one that doesn't stick or clump. It's the one that shuffles. And these are the fronts. So he puts an affirmation on them already in there. So you do not need the guidebook. The guidebook won't talk you through these cards, but it will talk you through other things that you can do with your cards. So um, eight of wands, I swiftly focus all my energy and where you're going. So this was my three card spread. So I'll just bring it out a little bit and I'll show you as it looked on the table. And then we have a deck to go with this. Well, ready to go. So there is a card in this deck that I'm not particularly enamoured with, but that's okay. It's one card. Well, it's just personal preferences, but so um, they look beautiful together on the table. There are no females in this deck. It's all masculine, which was the reason behind it. So a deck with masculine energy. You can give this to a beginner to read tarot because of the um, affirmations on the top, the kind of jumping off points for reading with the deck. So like your hanged man, I am illuminated, our crown prince of discs, I am nature, I am nurture. I like that. So he's really thought about this. These are things that he's, you know, obviously come up with over time of um, using cards and reading tarot. Let's take this one up there. So knight of discs with the star. Moving into Knight of Swords. The Nurturer. I embody sensual growth. We have our Seven of Discs. I patiently left and let nature take its course. And the Four of Cups. I am in tranquil state of trance. So those are my, you know, focus, avoid do embrace type layout and then we had the um beltane seasons of the witch because of course it's the season um, and that was my overall oracle card that went with it and just as a general and um, they had a really nice feel to them because so we've got creation with the nurturer Nine of discs, strength, sun, sun god. So instantly you can see um, they they were a good match. They were quite succinct with each other, um, very unplanned. And these, these are clearly a big deck and very similar in card size to these. Leafus Tarot is just a tiny bit smaller, a scooch smaller than the um, Beltane Oracle. So we have our Ace of Wands, Ten of Discs, Page of Wands, and Fertilising. I love this. Page of Wands, I am Rebel. Um, fertilising. Food is not the only thing that nourishes you, dear one. Be mindful of what you feed your soul. <laughs> um, maybe that's just my cheeky mind there putting those together with the, yeah. Okay, we'll stop there. It's PG rated. Ten of Wands with our fate. Um that, of course, is the High Priestess, isn't it? Fate? Or is that the Wheel of Fortune? Oh, Levi. I didn't pay attention. My shuffle up deck is probably in the guidebook. I'll go back and check. Uh, Two of Cups. I think it's High Priestess. 
no, fates could well be the wheel. Back to the wheel. Um, and B, don't drink all life from one flower. There are many to taste and many to explore. Oh, again, another cheeky read. And if your brain doesn't go where mine does, I apologise in advance. So we have six swords, seven swords, the magus and morning dew. What stillness does the silence of one's steadiness bring? You could easily do a comedy read, couldn't you? King of Cups, Eight of Cups, Knight of Cups and Growth. Inside myself, I've sown beauty with wounds which speak with my immortality in the expansive external song, softly bellowing in spirit. I am fueled by romance. I have mastered my emotions and I am ready to move on emotionally. So, yeah. So if you have this and this and you haven't done this, put them together. There we go. There's my least favourite card in the deck. Blah. Um, he's done it beautifully, but, you know, I just feel like I need to, I don't know, take out the eyeballs or something, something to make it less... Um, like it's staring at me. <laughs> uh, eight of discs. I am prudently honing my craft with the devil. I refuse malicious temptation and our oracle. I see beyond the veil. That must be the high priestess. Inner power. Let it be known. No will or desire is more powerful than I embodied. Ooh, strong. So... I think we've played with those enough, but I think, yeah, get them out and play with them. Um, this might not be everyone's favourite deck, and I get it, but I think this is, for me, really... It shouldn't be amusing, should it? Should it be amusing? Should it be fun? Actually, yeah, why shouldn't it be? This deck is colourful and fun enough. Um, throwing that in, plus my naughty mind... Uh, I've got like amusing, a bunch of amusing scenarios from these. So here we have our tower. I accept the necessity of radical change with our ace of cups. I have access to the power of water with our six of cups. I find joy in nostalgia. And then we have a love spell. Let the honey of your soul swell in the depths of your love. And I shall uh, probably leave you with that, this final one with our chariot, the fool, king of swords, hand fasting. For, for that deck right so the next deck that i had out to play with was the uh, this one so the queen alice so i use this one to do a couple of spreads as i've said so we did the moon spread um the month head spread and the trickster spread so this is the one by Dame Darcy. As you see, it comes in a magnetic box. Bring it down. Have a look at these. So, um, brought it out to play with for my garden spread, secret garden spread, and it's stayed out since. Um, most I've used it actually since I've bought it. So, I knew it would finally like have its day when it gets used, but. It's just I've pulled it out a few times and it's not really trying to click with me, but this time it clicked. So every deck has its dawn. So beautiful artwork, whimsical. You can see what's going on in them. Some different depictions. And it's just, it's really fun, I think, you know, playful. Um, like I love that Four of Cups. So... What I'll do is I'll show you how this one looks in the spread as well. We'll take a look at the tricks to spread from Aries Witchcraft. So position one, what area of my life is the trickster influencing? We have the Knight of Swords with, I hope I've got all the cards out, the Chariot. So that's position one. Position two, what does this energy benefit me? So we have the emperor. Position three, how does this energy challenge my preconceived beliefs? Nine of swords. 
Position four, what lesson am I refusing to see? Eight of Cups. And position five, how can I best integrate this energy into this current situation? Queen of Swords. So I just felt like this um, deck went really well with the questions. And then when I saw it laid out like this, it felt the right energy for the tricks to spread. Um, it just all felt like it kind of, you know, went into each other. So um, it's influencing my direction, um, defensiveness from the past, because we're facing that way in both. We have the um, how does energy benefit me? So um, I need to take control of my domain in order to move forwards. The nine of swords by seeing this. The Nine of Swords was um, energy challenging my preconceived beliefs. So challenging my hopes, fears, what causes them. So remembering, um, you know, like action, reaction. Every action has a reaction and karma. Everything comes from something that we've experienced. So knowing why the reaction is what it is. What did I experience? When did I last feel like that? How can I challenge that feeling? Is it real or am I making it up? Then we have the what lesson am I refusing to see? Things that need to be left behind. I'm clearly not leaving things behind when I need to. In a timely fashion, I'm trying to keep everything rosy, rainbowy, bright. Um, sometimes you just got to stop. And then how can I beat, integrate this, um, how can I best integrate this energy into my current situation? So, you know, you've just got to kind of avoid the drama. Give in, eat the cake. Don't be guilty. So there's the trickster spread. So if you want to see more with that and see how um, the conversation unfolded over on Aries Witchcraft channel, I will, if I remember, link it below. But I don't know if I'm going to remember all of these things because I'm kind of running out of brain space. But we shall keep going. We have the Tarot of the Divine. So this one got laid out in a spread. And this is the um, one, you know, with every card is a different story from storybooks from around the world. I love this deck. It's a really pretty, beautiful, high quality, um, inexpensive deck. I do recommend it. So for this one, right, so um, I used it at the bottom of my tree, so let's just drop four cards down, shall we? So these were the roots of my tree. Then I had my um, feeding energy. So we'll drop that one in. And all I'm doing here is simply showing you what it looks like in a spread. I'm not going to translate for you. And then we have the um, overall energy that was coming from this. Can you see all that? So we've got the Fire Festival 11, through flame and through song, there will rise a new dawn. So that's the main kind of feeder energy or helper energy. So this would have been week one, Queen of Swords with the Fire Festival, new dawn, new day, moving into the Knight of Pentacles. So how the Queen of Swords is going to give me the Knight of Pentacles kind of energy through new dawn, new day. And then we have here, so it would be the sun again, so the sun feeding into the Ace of Pentacles. Um, and that's a, that's a beautiful message right there, isn't it? So the sun, new dawn, new day, Ace of Pentacles, new ideas, new finances, new um, health, new, you know, new material wealth. We have the lovers, new dawn, new day, into the Three of Pentacles. Well, hopefully that's not a threesome, but it's there. But, uh, yeah, no, collaboration. So um, New partnerships, relationships, um, partnerings, pairings, perhaps in work, new door, new day, and um, getting things done together. And then we have our seven of swords out to the page of cups through new door, new day. So there, that was how the Tarot of the Divine worked in the spread for April's Tarot and Witchery spread for the month ahead. I'll just show you a few more cards from this one. I don't think I show it very often, actually. Probably because I can't remember the name of it most of the time. I've had to Google it myself. 
But yeah, I mean, look at that for a Ten of Cups. Four of Swords, Five of Swords. I love the Magician. Another World card. Emperor. Six of Wands. King of Coins. Sun God. So let's pop that one away. And then, final bunch of decks. Um, I'll just show you what they look like together rather than a particular spread. But it was the cheeky edition. Same ones I used last year and my always birthday deck. So this one is always my tarot. I have a couple of oracles I use and I chose to layer up a third just to see, did it add anything? Did it, would it work with this deck? Could I use it together? Because you know when you're a creature of habit and you want to use the same decks because you know they're fail safe. So this with this and um, Sacred Destiny are my fail safe decks for my birthday spreads. I was taking a risk putting an extra one in so I just wanted to like layer it alongside and see what it does. So let's have a look. Highly laminated deck. Probably should have, you know, kind of. At least pre shuffled or something for these, gotten out of the box. I wasn't going to do this, but we will. Just to show you how they sort of work together. Now, the magic for these was um, when I got into the books and, you know, pulled my messages out of the books, I think, for me. Although this did add something. I'm not even sure if this added a clarifier to what these two were saying um, in many respects. So let's just take a look. So we've got Queen of Water with the Dragon's Lair and that's telling us to be compassionate. Well, the Queen of Water usually is compassionate. So it does, do you see what I mean? So it feels like that is the wrap up word for them two messages right there. So could I have done it just with that deck and not these? Would I understand that message on its own without these? Probably not. <laughs> Let's just, um, just run through a few. Five of Fire with Deep Freeze and Radiant. So it's sort of telling you how to move forward, isn't it? Six of Fire. One Ring Circus with Magical. And they kind of look a bit like each other, don't they? That sort of reminds me of a floating, well, to me, it reminds me of a floating circus. Um, this one is an elephant. And then we've got the, the magicalness of it all, especially like where they are, like, you know, surrounded by um, the magic of the world. Three of Earth with Compass and then Serenity. So these are actually quite serene. And finding your, you know, to navigate your way around, you probably do need to be you know, that moment of serenity to navigate what's going on. So Ace of Earth, Talisman and Joyous. Nine of Earth with details, details, details and mindful. So Nine of Fire, Heal the Ouch. I love this card and Adventure. It's so sweet um, with our nine of fire. And that one again is really delicate. I love the imagery of that. Um, but there's always adventure in all that we do. And then even there, look, we've got the two little um, cats sort of reminiscent of this image here. And there's one watching. So I just... Three of air, ride the wave with wisdom. So, yeah, I hope you found that um, interesting with the cards. I shall put them away. Let me know what you think about this particular combination. I think most people kind of may or may not have some of these by now. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on what you think with that unusual mix. I wouldn't normally have paired all that together. So it surprised me um, and as to how well it worked, which I really enjoyed. So that was, of course, the Enchanted Maps Oracle by Colette Baron reed with her good tarot and Terry Foss's um, Earthly Souls and Spirits Oracle. 
And then there was one thing I think I've been promising to show, and I cannot remember the love of money if I ever showed it. I talked about it. Somebody, I shall mention no names, convinced me that um, cross stitch or stitching or slow stitching, perhaps is the right word, was a really good way of being mindful and, um, you know, kind of like spending your energy to slow down, slow life down. Now, I'm not disputing that. I think that they're right. I think that my need to jump in and do something may have got the better of me. So here's what I created. Took me a lot longer than I thought. I thought this was like a 10 hour job maximum, you know, do it in a day, no problem. Um, took ooh, 30, probably 30, 40 hours. This is my first attempt at cross stitch to be fair. So 30 to 40 hours. And this is the final result. It is um, all stuck in, stuck it to the thingy. I'll put a backing on it and then I will hang it up. And I'm very proud of it. I think it's amazing. So if you want to do something like this, I do recommend it. This was a pattern I purchased from um, Little Plastic Covers on Etsy. And I, it was a kit, actually. It wasn't a pattern. It was a whole kit. So she sent me all the bits. She sent me, you can see I've covered it up for the most part. So she sent me the pattern. She sent me the colours. It's really nice how she does it. It tells you really, really good instructions in here. Um, the whole thing's copyright, so I'm not going to show her whole um, items. But you can find her on um, Instagram at Little Plastic Covers, Facebook Little Covers, and Twitter at Little Covers, hashtag Plastic Little Covers. And yeah, I did say Plastic Little Covers. All rights reserved. And then um, there you go, Plastic Covers cross stitch pattern. And what she does is she gives you the threads all lined up and then that key is on this so this is all keyed so you know what colors you want you've got enough threads to do what you need to do and um yeah i do recommend it so if you want to do something different something slow something to take your mind off things occupy your time give this a go right the next video i think that's coming your way is probably going to be my um birthdays haul because i was going to be an adult about everything could not buy anything and use it all to buy adult things and then um I got ill again and my resolve broke and I was feeling really sorry for myself and I just decided that the birthday money I'd been given by my partner I wasn't going to buy new clothes with and I treated myself to my wish list so I'm waiting for the items to arrive and then I will show you what came in okay that's it have fun see you in the next one until then take care be good don't overspend and um be in the moment, be mindful, go outside and spend some time in the now and the present. Let's not live in the past or the future. Let's just be who we are today. Take care. Bye bye.